Okay, some breaking news coming in the last couple of minutes or so, and it regards Impact Wrestling and the Ring of Honor. Yes, the ROH World Championship is going to be defended inside of an Impact Wrestling ring. This is really, really exciting stuff because the Ring of Honor World Champion, Jonathan Gresham, will defend his Ring of Honor World Championship against Chris Sabin. Yes, Impact Wrestling's Chris Sabin this January inside of an Impact Wrestling ring at Dallas, Texas. You can see it right there. This is exciting. This is really, really exciting news. Kind of come a little bit out of nowhere, to be honest with you. I, I really wasn't expecting this. Um, obviously, we know Jonathan Gresham has got a lot going on at the moment. Of course, he was crowned uh, the Ring of Honor World Champion uh, at the final Ring of Honor pay-per-view, the final battle uh, earlier this month. And like with everyone in Ring of Honor, of course, they're released from their contracts or they're set to be released from their contracts at the end of the year. And a lot of people, I think, you know, I assume lots of names are going to be going to AEW. We know Jay Lethal's already gone there. Brody King's signed of AEW. He's going to be appearing very soon. Dan Housen looks like he's going to be going to AEW. Uh, Roxy, of course, was part, and she's the Ring of Honor Women's Champion. She recently was at a WWE tryout. I think a lot of people thought that Jonathan Gresham... I don't, this was an interesting one, to be honest with you. I think some people possibly thought he would go to AEW, um, but it looks really, really unlikely when when I look at that. And when a lot of people have said in the past, oh, he's going to go to AEW, I never, I, that never looked likely to me. The reason I say that, one, of course, his wife, Jordan Grace, the Impact Digital Media Champion, is in Impact Wrestling. So the tie's there for that, and that does mean something in the world of professional wrestling. Two, there's a lot of beef. If you're not familiar with this, there's quite a lot of beef going on with Jonathan Gresham, and not specifically AEW, but an AEW contracted talent in Anthony Agogo right now. I don't know if you've really seen it. Anthony Agogo, it all kind of stems from that final battle match. And Anthony Agogo talking about Jonathan Gresham's stature, how he's small and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of snowballed into what appears to be a shoot. Jonathan Gresham has gone on record several times saying, no, this isn't a work. I'm not working a program with Anthony Agogo. I'm not coming into AEW. I don't want to wrestle Anthony Agogo. Anthony Agogo is not going to wrestle at the Terminus pay-per-view or the Terminus event that Jonathan Gresham's running. That's his new company that's come out of the, the ashes, shall we say, of Ring of Honor. That's not happening. Anthony Agogo has got really personal with it and I think at times overstepped the mark, especially in 2021 pro wrestling. Um, and said some quite derogatory things about Jordan Grace as well and all that kind of stuff. And when I look at that and I look at AEW not really doing anything about it, I look at that and I go, well, that, Jonathan Gresham's not going to come into that company. I know people have, have have issues with each other still working AEW. A great example is of CM Punk and Colt Cabana, but I just felt that was unlikely. But even then, I certainly didn't expect Jonathan Gresham to be defending the Ring, the Ring of Honor World Championship at Hard to Kill in January. And it's a massive match, and it's an exciting one. It's a, it's a really exciting one and again I, I didn't really see it coming that much to be honest with you I was kind of taken aback when I just saw the news pop up on my uh, Twitter feed a second ago but look Chris Sabin has got so much history with Ring of Honor he made, made his start there he made his start in, in Ring of Honor let's be honest with you he was all the way back in was it June 20, 2003 um, you know, he's got so much history, so much history um, with that company. I mean, he's wrestled on and off with them. Of course, he's probably best known for his time in Impact Wrestling. But before he ever went into TNA Wrestling, he was in Ring of Honor. He's a former Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champion. So this is a guy also that has a huge history of Ring of Honor. And I think a lot of people weren't really sure what was going to happen with Ring of Honor going forward and what's going to happen with the Ring of Honor World Championship going forward. Um, obviously, at Final Battle, as I mentioned, Jonathan Gresham won the title, but... We know Ring of Honor is not going away in the sense that it's ceasing to exist. It's just the case of Ring of Honor as we know it no longer exists. They're going on hiatus until, I think, the, for the first quarter of next year. So April, around April, they're looking to return. But they're not going to be this, this company anymore that signs people to exclusive contracts. They're essentially going to become what I think is an equivalent to a PWG, this sort of super indie where they book lots of people for shows, but nobody's tied down to contracts or anything like that. So people were a bit like, well, what is Ring of Honor going to look like going forward? Obviously, you know, despite Ring of Honor kind of being in a state of flux right now, you still have to get their permission to defend the ROH World Championship. But just that alone, 
you know, Impact and, and Ring of Honor on a couple of occasions have had working relationships throughout the years. Obviously, in the early days and controversy ended that one earlier on. That's when Punk worked for both and all that kind of stuff. So controversy and AJ Styles and all that kind of stuff. Controversy ended that one. And then um, what sort of 2014, 2015, the whole Destination America thing. And that got a bit, you know, uh, messy and all that kind of stuff. So they've tried it a couple of times. Is this, a, a, you know, a full on working relationship with, with Impact and Ring of Honor? I don't know because I don't really know what Ring of Honor is anymore. That's the thing. But all I know is that the fact that you've got the Ring of Honor, the RH World Championship being defended inside of an Impact Wrestling ring on an Impact Wrestling pay-per-view against someone that is so widely associated, of course, with Impact Wrestling, but also Ring of Honor as well and Chris Sabin, that's awesome. That's awesome. And just the match alone, Jonathan Gresham versus Chris Sabin, what a match that's going to be. What a match that's going to be. And for me now, I look at Hard to Kill and, and that's the match. That's the match. You know, there are other things going into that show that are exciting. I'm excited, of course, for Josh Alexander versus Jonah. And you've got the main event, which is for the Impact World Championship. You've got Moose, Matt Cardona. Um, uh, uh, you know, th th those are exciting elements of that. Um, w. Morrissey. But, you know, do, am I like completely sold that that's, um, you know, going to be this amazing main event or the exciting thing for Hard to Kill. Now, to be honest with you, I look at this. I look at this. Uh, this match has just been announced, and I go, "That that's very exciting." You know, that that's something to really get excited about. Um, as I mentioned, when it comes to uh, other things on that show, I mean, you know, the Mickey James Diana Perazzo match, obviously Texas Death Match, Knockout Championship. That, to be honest with you. And this still could be the case. I, I think there's a really strong argument to be made that that should be the main event for the show. Because the World Championship match, Moose, Matt Cardona, W. Morrissey, does that scream main event to you? Probably not. Probably not. In terms of the context of the card, there's the Ultimate X match, the Knockouts and Ultimate X match, which I think is going to be great. You've got the Hardcore War, which should be fun and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but to be honest with you, as I mentioned, now this new match that's just been announced, the Ring of Honor World Championship, I don't think it will main event the show because it won't. I mean, I'd be very surprised if an ROH World Championship match main evented an Impact Wrestling show. You can't bury your world title like that. Uh, but I think it certainly is um, a candidate to be match of the show. N no doubt about that. No doubt in my mind about that. What does it mean for Jonathan Gresham going forward in Impact Wrestling? Does this mean he's going to be a regular in Impact going forward? Possibly. There's a real chance. There's a real chance for that. The reason I say there's a real chance is because we know how Impact Wrestling does business when it comes to contracts. We know Impact Wrestling, they're fine. <laughs> they're fine with you working for that company and making shots and not having a contract. They're fine and just having a short-term contract. They're fine and you coming in and working a handshake deal. And I'm sure they've probably reached out to Jonathan Gresham. Maybe that was through Jordan Grace or whoever and said, look, we know the situation with Ring of Honor and all that kind of stuff. But if you want to work some matches, we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. You know, we'll make it happen, and there's you don't have to sign anything. You don't have to be in a long-term exclusive deal. Also, as well, I think this is probably the most likely scenario here. There's several Impact Wrestling talents that are working that terminus event. One being the Impact World Champion Moose, who, of course, you're going to always have priority over your your bookings of your World Champion. I wouldn't be stunned in the slightest if maybe a deal was worked out in 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 the sense of. You want to have the Impact World Champion on your show, Moose? 100%. But we want you, and by proxy, I guess, maybe it was initially it wasn't the Ring of Honor World Championship, but if you're going to have Moose for your Terminus show um, and, our, and our digital media champion in, in Jordan Grace, we would like to have you booked for a match uh, Impact Wrestling. And given the fact he's technically a free agent now, even though he's the Ring of Honor World Champion too, they can do that. And I'm sure Jonathan Gresham can do that. So it's very exciting. As I mentioned, when I saw that, I was like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. But the more you look at it, the more it does make sense. You know, obviously, as I mentioned, the Jordan Grace thing, all of the impact talents appearing on the Terminus event as well. It makes a lot of sense. And I think it maybe is um, the beginning of Jonathan Gresham working quite a few impact impact spots. I mean, eventually, because he'll, he'll beat Chris Saban. There's no, I, I would be flabbergasted, flabbergasted if Jonathan Gresham dropped the Ring of Honor World Championship inside of an Impact Wrestling ring um, against Chris Saban. If anything, when you think about it now, given that Ring of Honor is going on hiatus for the first quarter of next year, they've still got to try, I suppose, 
and keep the brand name alive. So I think we could be be seeing a situation from a Ring of Honor perspective now where Jonathan Gresham is defending the ROH World Championship at just uh, select shows, whether it's Impact Wrestling, Hard to Kill, whether it's a PWG event, whether it's just an independent event or wherever. You know, like when before the NWA had regular television, when Nick Aldis became the world champion back in 20. 20- 17 2018 there was still a brand and they were still a promotion but they didn't have tv they weren't running events so they had their champion just be a traveling champion and go around and defend the title in czw and impact and china and the uk i think we could see a similar situation jonathan gresham might just become a traveling ring of honor champion and then once ring of honors do start running events again um in next year whatever that looks like he will still be the world champion then but during that time he would have done i think several appearances for impact wrestling which is exciting it's really exciting and um and to be honest with you i think it's maybe a bit of a shot in the arm that impact wrestling needs and the reason i say that is you know impact wrestling had a had a great 2020 and um a great um, let's say sort of six months of 2021. A lot of people were critical about the working relationship with AEW. We sort of come out of that now and people can say how beneficial was it really to Impact Wrestling? Did it hurt Impact Wrestling? What did Impact really benefit of it? And I and I can see both sides of that argument. I can because from from the pro side of what they benefited from that AEW working relationship, they did their biggest pay-per-view that they've done since Anthem purchased the company in 2017. That can't be overlooked. That's something they'll be thrilled with. That Rebellion pay-per-view, AEW World Championship, Impact World Championship, did the best business that they've done in a really long time. Again, since Anthem purchased the company. So they'll be thrilled with that. Coming out of it, though, though now, <laughs> Impact's cold. It, it, it's cold. I think the ratings reflect it. Um, I think just the general buzz around the product reflects it. Um, there have been great moments this year. I mentioned you know, Jay White showing up at Slammiversary was a lot of fun. And all that kind of stuff was fun. But now, right now in December of 2021, you do look at Impact and go, where is the company going right now? And I think they probably realized to build up a bit of a bit of buzz again, they need to do what worked last time. And that's maybe build those working relationships, but find something that's a bit more sustainable and, and also use it as a way to build up their own stars. And I think maybe that's the biggest criticism of that AEW working relationship is it was great. Kenny Omega appeared, Matt Hardy appeared, Private Party appeared. You had these AEW names show up, Frankie Kazarian, Christopher Daniels, etc. But who out of their a out of their Impact Wrestling talents really got over because of that? Who did they help elevate during that period of time? Nobody really. The aim was, and you had Christian Cage up as well. I think the ultimate aim was to have, um, well, I nearly broke that. You have your um, someone like a Josh Alexander was to beat Kenny Omega, and then they get over. Yes, Josh Alexander beat Christian Cage, but did he really get over as a proxy? I don't know if he necessarily did. So. I think they need to leverage these working relationships with like Ring of Honor and the NWA and maybe even bring in, obviously, because they got New Japan, but also, you know, MLW, try and get a relationship going there. And, but use it not just as a way to boost ratings or boost views or anything like that, but also get over get over stars. Um, but that's, that's way in the future. That's 2022 kind of stuff. One thing we do know that is happening in 2022 is that the Ring of Honor World Championship is going to be defended inside of an Impact Wrestling ring. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. Now, it must be pointed out that um, I think, is this going to be defended under pure rules? I mean, Jonathan Gresham said at Final Battle he would only defend the title under pure rules. So I don't know if that is going to happen. Um but it's, it's just, this is going to be a historic moment. This is really going to be a, a, a historic moment. The ROH World Championship being defended inside of an Impact Wrestling ring. The match is going to be awesome. Again, the announcement, I was kind of taken aback by it. I was caught off guard. I didn't really see this uh, coming. Um, but I think, as I mentioned, this is probably the beginning of... Um, of the traveling champion, of the traveling Ring of Honor champion. I, I just hope, as someone that, you know, selfishly, that covers the Impact Wrestling a lot and is a fan of Impact Wrestling, I hope that this is um, the beginning of lots of Jonathan Gresham appearances in Impact Wrestling. And I do think that will be the case. I don't think he's going to drop the title at Hard to Kill by any stretch of the imagination, but I think they're going to have a damn good match, and I'm excited to see it. So, very exciting news. But look, guys, as always, it's just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on Jonathan Gresham defending the Ring of Honor World Championship against Chris Sabin in Impact Wrestling? 
Wrestling at Hard to Kill in January. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys, talking about Impact Wrestling, AEW, WWE, New Japan Pro Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved with the community. Drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Got the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestle News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video, along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.